So what I have in front of me is a discarded microwave. This one was found by Luke as he was driving down the lonely alleys late one night. And I've actually been looking for a microwave because it was an idea sent to me by Ron Ranting, uh, Ratting. It's an awesome idea because he's really into upscaling things and reusing things and recycling things and me too. Now you might remember that we've got ourselves a resin 3D printer. Now all we have to do with those prints when they come off is slosh them around in a bit of IPA and stick them on the uh, windowsill to get a bit of sunlight. But of course it is winter and that can take a little bit of time from the cure properly. Now you can pay a hundred quid or so and get something called a curing station which is little more than a set of UV lights and a turntable. And Ron said, well, if you ever come across a, an old uh, microwave oven, Rob, why don't you convert it into a curing station? I thought that's an awesome idea. So we have been looking out for this for a little while. We now have one courtesy of Luke, and we're going to convert it into a UV curing table. The first thing we need to do is take the uh, top off and get into the gubbins inside. Okay, so I got the top off. It was four screws. Now, here's the magnetron right here. There's the transformer. There's the capacitor. Um, this is the cooling fan. This one's actually a combined microwave oven. We can tell that because we've got the heating elements right there. So we can take all of that out. We don't need any of it. So it's just a matter of unscrewing it and taking those bits out. So I have basically removed everything. I've just unscrewed everything and removed it because that's how easy it is. And I've got a whole load of gubbins here, particularly the microwave transformer. We've got the magnetron right there, of course the capacitor, the original fan. There's all bits and pieces that I'll use for something else. But the main case is now clear of absolute everything apart from the power board and right under here the turntable motor because those are the two bits that we want. Now the only thing we need to do is add some uh, UV lights in here and turn that motor on. So to do that, what I've got are these. These are inline, slimline, standard fittings. You can buy these at your big box store. I went down to B&Q and bought these for 50p each. And they fit rather nicely on the front there. So one will turn on the motor and then the other one will turn on the LED lights. And the beauty of this is they're rated for the voltage they're going to get. Uh, they're extremely cheap and it makes the whole thing, if you think about it, plug and play. Because we've, we've done nothing with this. All we've done is take the top off and take all the bits out. And all we're now going to do is wire that motor into one of these switches and then wire the UV LED lights into the other switch in the same way you would light, uh, wire a house switch. So nothing to it. Now then, I just need to cut that front bezel a little bit so that I can get that in there and obviously drill it out so I can put some bolts through. Okay, to wire this together, now there's a ton of ways to go. I've just chosen what I think is the easiest. I got this from the local store, which you can see has got a USB port on it. And I got this because it was four pounds. This was 50p, the two switches were 50p. And I also spent five pounds on a strip of LED lights. These LED lights are UV LED at 385 to 405 nanometers. So exactly what we want, but they're USB. So I needed a USB to plug them into. No worries at all, it can go on a standard house fitting that'll fit nicely in there. And this back box here, a Patras box, forms an enclosure for everything, so everything's nice and safe. Now then, the power comes in through this power isolation board and we've got a neutral coming there and I've connected it to that yellow neutral that goes to the turntable motor. Then the live comes here to be connected here. These two go to the separate switches, so we have a switched live. One of them then goes down the black wire, which is the other side of the turntable motor, and the other one then comes to this, which will get screwed into the live here, and that will be the supply for the USB. So that's the wiring of it, now we just fasten it all together. All wired up, flip the switch, and sure enough, the motor turns for what you wanted to do. Now we can put the lights in. Okay, so I've stuck the LED lights in there, and we flip those lights on. There we go, we get artificial sunlight. So now all I have to do is put the cover back on and it's actually ready to rock and roll, as Luke likes to say. You see what I've done here, basically all I've done is put a plug socket on it, eh? So I could actually put anything I wanted. I've used the USB lights because they were the cheapest 
and the easiest to get hold of. But if I needed a plug-in transformer with transformer lights, clearly, I could just put a plug on there and I could probably charge my phone from this thing. Anyway, let's get the cover back. Here we go. Our new V-curing station made from an old microwave oven. I thought it was an awesome idea, actually. As it happens, Luke is just doing a print, so we're going to be curing it in our new station. And I have been told that this is great for... Um, things like keys and phones and uh, antibacteria, that sort of stuff, we're going to use it for curing prints. But, brilliant idea, Ron. Thank you very much for the suggestion, mate. Easy to do. I mean, I spent about £10 on the whole thing. It probably took me about an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.